Okay, so in this video we're going to examine the uniform uh, distribution in uh, more detail and we're talking about uh, continuous random variables, so we're talking about uh, uniform continuous uh, distributions. Okay, uh, so uh, the idea is basically uh, that um, if you take for instance uh, an interval, an interval, and uh, you want to pick a point and your task is to pick a point on that interval, uh, then the, the uh, probability space uh, consists of the sample space of all possible outcomes, and all possible outcomes are that you could get e you could pick any of the points on that entire interval, which is why I've drawn uh, the entire interval in the uh, sample space. Uh, and then we have a set of events and uh, a probability measure. And then what we have is a random variable x, which is going to map it onto real numbers. So we're going to ascribe uh, real numbers to this. Now, in the last video, well, in the, the video before the previous one, uh, we ascribed 0 to this point and 1 to this point, and, um, and we made it make sense in between, i.e. we gave the point halfway across the number half, and we'd give the point a quarter across the number quarter, etc. Uh, now we're going to generalise that slightly. We're going to give... Uh, this point uh, a starting point A and we're going to give this point a starting point B So we're just going to map it onto a closed uh, interval in the real line a B now uh, to generalize this Okay, uh, and again what we're going to do is we're going to uh, map a point halfway along to halfway along here So which would be uh, B plus A over 2 and we'll map a uh, point quarter of a way along a quarter of a way along there etc um, so, uh, if we want, uh, we want to examine the properties of uh, this probability dent of this um, probability distribution. So, we're going to say that x is a uniformly distributed, uniformly distributed on the interval a b. So, the random variable is distributed uniformly a b. Okay. Uh, so, firstly, let's work out the CDF. So, uh, big F of x, which is the probability that it's less than or equal to some point x. So, we take some point x. Uh, well, basically, uh, that's going to be equal to uh, how big uh, this, um, this interval from a to x is with respect to the size of the whole interval. So, the length of the interval a to x is x minus a, and the length of the entire interval is b minus a. So, the fraction of uh, this interval that... Um, uh, the fraction of the total interval a b that a x that the interval a x is uh, is going to be the probability that when you pick a random point you are going to get it within the interval a x. Uh, so that uh, there is the uh, CDF for our um, CDF for our uniform distribution. So from that we can work out what the PDF is. So we know that the PDF uh, is uh, which is uh, given the uh, name little f is equal to the derivative of big F. Uh, with respect to x. So if we differentiate this with respect to x, uh, we're just going to get 1 over b minus a. So we get a uniform probability distribution, which uh, probability density function, uh, which is uh, why uh, this is called the uniform distribution, because the probability density function is just a constant. So if we plot the CDF and we plot the PDF, the CDF looks like this. It, it's zero all the way up to the value a, which I, which is why I've made this wrong. This is wrong, actually. This is just what it's equal to on. Uh, so if I write it down again down here, uh, f of x is actually equal to zero uh, if x is less than a. If we're being careful about it, this is what uh, the CDF really is because it's defined everywhere. Uh, and it's uh, this function here. If x is an element of the interval a b, and it's one if x is greater than b. Okay, so that's the CDF. So if we plot it, we go all the way along to a here, and then we start increasing at a at some uh, at some um, uniform rate, uh, where, where the gradient is 1 over b minus a, and then it gets to 1, and then it stops. So this is where at b here. Okay, uh, so similarly, if we define the PDF rigorously, it's going to be f of x is going to be equal to, um, it's going to be 0, if x is less than a, uh, it's not defined at x is equal to a and x is equal to b, uh, so it's then going to be equal to 1 over b minus a if x is equal to, uh, x is an element of uh, the interval a, b, and it's going to be equal to 0 again if x is greater than b. Uh, so if we plot this function, we're going to get that uh, it's some constant there between uh, a and b, and we don't really care about what it is other where other at other points, but it's going to be zero there. Uh, so um, 
the question of what it is at A uh, is a difficult one, so we'll just put little um, little open circles there and say it's not defined at A and B. Okay, uh, so there we have our PDF. So this is the PDF of a uh, continuous uh, uniform distribution. So this is 1 over B minus A. And uh, this over here is the CDF up here. Okay, so we might want to ask questions like, what are the expected value of a random variable if it's distributed, uh, if it's distributed uniformly? So what is e of x? Uh, well, e of x is going to be the integral of x times the uh, probability density function between negative infinity and infinity dx. Now, uh, for the purposes of integration, it does not matter that it's not uh, not defined at two points because we'll just uh, we'll just say that this is just equal to the integral between negative infinity and a of x times f of x dx plus the integral from a to b of uh, x times little f of x dx uh, plus the integral from x of f, f x f of x dx uh, from b to plus infinity. Now, because f, little f of x is zero on uh, the intervals negative infinity to a and b to infinity, uh, these two are both equal to zero, so we can get rid of those. So it's just this integral between a and b of x f of f of x. Uh, so ignoring the endpoints, then it's equal to x divided by b minus a, which is what uh, little f of x is, uh, dx between a and b. So if we integrate this, we're going to get um, we're going to get x squared over 2 uh, times, uh, we'll just put this over here, 1 mi over b minus a. Uh, so the integral of x is x squared over 2. Uh, well, the antiderivative of it is rather uh, x squared over 2. And we're just going to evaluate it between b uh, uh, between with the upper limit b and the lower limit a. Uh, so by the second fundamental theorem of calculus, this is just equal to b squared over 2 minus a squared over 2, all of them times 1 over b minus a. Now, this is equal to half of b squared minus a squared, but that's the same thing as b minus a, uh, b plus a, and then we've got over b minus a. Uh, so this is just equal to b plus a over 2. And that's basically telling us that the uh, expected value is the midpoint between a and b, which is quite uh, expected. Uh, so a plus b over 2 there. So that's the expected value of a, continu uh, of a continuous uniform distribution. OK, so now what we'll do is we'll work out the variance of a continuous uniform distribution. So the variance uh, of x, if you remember, is going to be, is it, well, we showed in it, the previous video that this was the expected value of x squared minus e of x squared. Now, we know that e of x is equal to a plus b over 2. So e of x squared is equal to a plus b over 2 squared, which is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared all over 2. So it's equal to a half a squared plus b squared minus a b, uh, sorry, plus a b. Okay, uh, so now all we need to do is work out what e of x squared is. Well, now we're going to apply the uh, law of the unconscious statist uh, of the unconscious statistician, which says that this is going to be equal to the integral between negative infinity and infinity of x squared uh, little f of x dx. Now, for the same reason as last time, uh, this is equal to uh, the integral uh, between a and b of x squared uh, little f of x dx, because on the interval negative infinity to a, little f of x is zero, and on the interval b to infinity, the, the, the uh, value of little f of x is uh, equal to zero. So the value of the integral of x squared times little f of x on those intervals is equal to zero. Uh, so uh, we can replace little f of x by uh, 1 over b minus a if we're just dealing with um, over the interval a, b. So x squared over b minus a dx. Then we can apply the second fundamental theorem of calculus. We can pull out the 1 over b minus a, and we'll get x cubed over 3, evaluated at the two m points, like so, uh, which is going to give us 1 over b minus a. Then we'll have a third, b cubed minus a cubed. Right, now what we can do is, similar to in this last case, we can pull out a b minus a of here, because b cubed minus a cubed is equal to b minus a, times b squared plus ab plus a squared. Just to show that, if we multiply this out, uh, we get bb 
B times B squared, which is going to give be B cubed. Then we get B plus A times AB, which is plus AB squared. Then we get A squared plus A squared B. Now if we do the A, we get minus AB squared. Then we get minus A squared B. And then we get minus A cubed. So this one cancels with this one, and this one cancels with that one, and we just get B cubed minus A cubed. So indeed, B cubed minus A cubed is equal to that. So uh, the expected value of x squared is therefore equal to 1 over B minus A uh, times a third of B minus A, uh, B squared plus AB plus A squared. Uh, so now cancel the B minus A, and you'll get a third of B squared plus AB uh, plus A squared. Now, subtract off e of the x, so look at the formula again, we've got variance of x is equal to e of x squared minus e of x squared. Uh, so the variance of x, uh, which is equal to e of x squared minus e of x squared, uh, is equal to a third uh, b squared plus ab plus a squared uh, minus a half uh, a squared plus b squared plus AB. Uh, so all of that is in the minus. Right, okay. Uh, so then what we get is we get uh, we get the um, we get the um, we, these bits are going to each cancel with one another. Uh, so we're going to get a third B squared and then this doesn't look at all right uh, because this is going to come out negative isn't it? Which doesn't look right at all. 